Hello, my name is Alan. I'm an applications engineer at National Semiconductor, where I work in the Simple Switcher product line developing Simple Switcher power modules. Today we'll be showcasing the extended temperature range products that we're just now introducing. In this family, we've taken the 42 volt series of products that's available in 1, 2, and 3 amp categories, and we've extended the temperature range so that they operate correctly down to minus 55 degrees C. We've also subjected this entire family of products to shock and vibration tests so that they'll find a good place in your ruggedized product. For the shock and vibration test, we went to an independent testing laboratory in Santa Clara near our facilities, and we subjected them to the shock and vibration tests that are illustrated in the following slide. For the drop test, these are the military and industrial tests that we've complied with, and the objective of the drop test is to rapidly decelerate the product at 1500 G's on all three axes, X, Y, and Z, and introduce added stress to the product. On the left side of your screen, you'll see that they've mounted some ICs on the left-hand side of the, of the uh, drop test fixture, and on the right side, they've mounted some circuit boards. On the right side of your screen, you'll see the drop test in action. Here's the results of the drop test, and you'll see that the peak acceleration reached 1,567 G's, surpassing the 1,500 G limit required of the test. The vibration test actually shakes the evaluation board on each axis to an acceleration of 20 G's. The frequency sweep is from 20 to 2,000 cycles, and the duration time is 4 minutes. It does it on each of the X, Y, and Z axes of the product. Here's a picture of the vibration test. On the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see the test head that the circuit boards are mounted on. And on the right-hand side, you'll see the vibration test while it's being performed. Additionally, there is a cold test, and we'll be illustrating that performance here in the lab today. Here's the test setup that we've got. So we have an input voltmeter an input ammeter, an output voltmeter, and an output ammeter. And we've also got a temperature indicator here. And you can see here that it's producing 3.3 volts at 3 amps out. Additionally, we've got a temperature forcing system. This is what we use in the lab to evaluate uh, products at uh, temperature extremes. And we'll lower the head on it. and we'll start the compressor. You'll notice that it's quite noisy. But in a matter of minutes, we'll be down to minus 55 degrees C, and we'll illustrate performance of the product operating under that harsh condition. We'll be doing a time lapse here and illustrating that the uh, output voltage of 3.3 volts decreases only slightly at uh, the minus 55 degree target. And here we are at minus 55 degrees C. Quite an abusive uh, test condition for this part. You'll see that we've still got 3.3 volts of output. It's still putting out full load current. But to make the test even harsher, we're gonna disable it and turn it back on in a minute after the part has settled itself to minus 55 degrees C. I'm gonna drop the enable input. The output voltage will drop down to zero volts. And in a minute, we'll start it again to show that at minus 55, there's no difficulty starting up at such a harsh temperature. And here we are, we're still at minus 55 degrees C. I'm gonna re-enable the part. You can see that it restores properly to 3.3 volts, three amps full load current at startup. And now we're gonna show you the board as we remove it from the test fixture. You'll see that a layer of frost develops in the board. Let's take it out and look at the abuse it's been subjected to. See the fog? Look at that layer of frost. We're excited about the EXT product line here at National Semiconductor. It provides you ruggedized performance and operation down to minus 55 degrees C. To learn more about this product family, visit the national website at national.com switcher. And don't forget about our online web tools like WebBench to help you with your design.